Hi there and welcome back. So let's see how we can implement this uh, swagger into our API. So the first thing uh, is that it might be a good idea to go to um, to the resources in Swagger and then choose uh, documentation. It's going to take you to this page here. And then if we select the specification uh, version 3, we can see we have a lot of information here and this will explain what is Swagger and how we can use it, the open API specification, and also something about the basic structure, how it looks. And you can write this uh, open API definition in YAML or JSON. Uh, a lot of the examples in, uh, in the documentation is written in YAML. So that's also what I, I'm going to use in, uh, in my example here. But we have a lot of different uh, examples here. We have data models, uh, the schemas, authentication, uh, data types, when we need to define uh, what type of data we're uh, sending. So let's get on to this. Okay, so the first thing is that we need to uh, include Swagger into our project. For that, we need some uh, packages, some npm packages. So I'm just going to install them first. So we're going to write npm install. Then we take the Swagger uh, UI Express. And then we also need YAML JS because we need to load this uh, configuration file or this definition that is written in YAML. So let's run this and then npm is going to install these two packages. We can see them in a minute in the JSON package JSON file right here. So that is nice. Next up is that we need to include them in our server.js. Uh, we need to require them. So we're going to make a uh, constant called swagger.ui. Require and then swagger express. And we also need to get the YAML. Uh, let's see here require whoop and let's just take the yaml.js so now we've loaded the dependencies let's just make it a little note here swagger dependencies and then we need to set it up to work here in our app so first we make a document or a Definition maybe is better. YAML. Then we need to load our uh, file that we haven't created yet, but we will in a minute. So swagger.yaml. And we're going to tell our app to use or to create a new route. So we're going to do slash API slash ducks and swagger ui Oop. serve and swagger ui setup then we're going to pass the swagger definition as a parameter okay so we included the dependencies and set it all up we imported our yaml uh, loader so that we can create this file here and we set up the route for the documentation. Cool, so now it's time to create this uh, swagger.yaml. So that is another file type than JSON. And um, let's see what happens if we run Notemon. You can see we have servers running connected successfully. We can see if we go to our uh, API here, we don't have any. Yeah, fail to load API definition. We don't have any definition loaded. That makes sense. And uh, yeah, this is where the documentation comes into place here because you can read a lot about how these de open API definitions can be made and the different properties and the values that we can have, the servers, the title, 
and the path that you can make. There's a lot of different settings that you can do. I'm going to copy in my file here uh, because if we write every line, it's going to take a long time to write this file and then I'm going to explain what is going on. So if we take the uh, terminal away here, whoop. So if I collapse this information here, uh, let's see here because we have quite some information, path, whoop. And this is also available on the GitHub uh, that is linked below in the video. But we can see that we have uh, some information about the uh, API. This is version 3. We also have some information about the title for this. We have a description that will be displayed in the Swagger UI. The version we have also, and then we have the service. And I've just written down the localhost version, but we could also easily write uh, different or multiple servers if we have a deployment server that we also want to test this again, so uh, see if it works. Okay, so then we have, uh, I'm just going to skip for the security th uh, schemes right now, but we also have made uh, the schemas pretty much the same as we have in the Mongoose models. You can see we have product and user. Then we also defined the product here. It is an object and the different properties that we also had in the Mongoose. So that is the product. We also have a user that we can create, uh, the name and the email, password and the date. And uh, let's just collapse that one again here. So that was the schemas. And then we have the path for this API. And one thing to note about this uh, YAML file here is that the indentation is really important. Uh, if you make an error regarding if it is not indented the correct way, it will not work. So it has to be indented the correct way. Uh, so if you if you indent too much, it will not be able to read it. If we take a look first, if we run, let's just see if we can, uh, I think I need to run it again here. So we run, uh, let's just run npm run start dev. See if we get an error. So connected successfully to MongoDB, and let's see if we refresh here. So we can see we get the whole uh, definition here and the documentation nice and easily. And yeah, let's just make a test to see if it actually works here. Then I can explain the definition. We can see it works here. We get the data. Okay, so. Just remove the terminal there. Uh, we have different paths, the different routes that we have created. So I have uh, the user register and I have user login. We have the products and we also have uh, with a specific ID on it. But if we take the products first, because that was the initial CRUD there, we can see that we have basically the same definition as we have in the product JS. Uh, so we have a get. And the get consists of a summary and a description, basically a description of the route there. And we can see that if we go to the, uh, the get here, then we have retrieves a list of products. That is the summary there. Then we have a description that might, uh, may be more elaborate, uh, retrieves a list of products as JSON objects. So that is written there. And then you can also uh, specify the responses. What do we get back here? We get a 200. If we uh, are successful, you can also specify what error type if it doesn't go right. If we have a have an error or something, but I didn't do this in this example here. Uh, I just described what we get back and we get a list of product JSON objects in an array. And you can, then you, we uh, also specify the content that it is uh, in JSON format, and then we can specify the schema. And because this is uh, the, the get route of the products, we will get an array. And in the array, we will have items of product. And this is a reference to our component that we defined up here in the schema. So that is a reference to the product. 
that we defined up here. Right? So that is the get route. And one thing to note here is that we don't have any authentication on the get route. So that is why this is pretty simple. We don't need to authenticate in any way. We don't need to log in or anything to see the product. Okay, that was the get. If we take a look at the, yeah, let's just have the get with the ID first. That is a bit the same. We have just the ID here. We have a parameter, but otherwise it is the same. We have a summary description. Then we specify the parameters that we uh, get in. So we specify that it should be in the path. It is an ID that we specify. It is required for this route and it is a MongoDB ID number. Uh, and it's a string, okay? And what do we get back? We basically get the same back as we had before. Uh, actually, probably should not be an array, it should just be one object, but uh, yeah. We get uh, something back and we can see that if we take the ID here, that is the get route that will accept one parameter, MongoDB ID. And if we just take an item, let's just take one from the database here. Product two, if we go to our, whoop, try it out. And then if we do like this, and run it, we can see we get this specific uh, product back. Okay, so that is the specific uh, product get here. All right, uh, then you can see that, uh, let's see here if we collapse this get here again. We also have a put that will update the, a specific product. And again, we will have this parameter and the same um, the same definition for what we will actually specify. So that is the ID and the request body. This is what we're passing in the updated product or the product we want to send to the database. And that is required. And that is a JSON schema is the product again. So we are reusing our definition. And one thing to note, uh, yeah, we can just take the response that we have updated it and we get the updated product back. This route requires authentication. So we specify the security property here, and then we specify API key authentication. So where does that come from? Well, if we go in the top and take a look at the components, we can see that we have security schemes. And this is the guy here, security schemes, API uh, key authentication. Uh, what type it is, it is an API key. Where do we specify it? It should be in the header. And the name of the API is auth token. Okay, so this is one way of, because you can uh, you can specify a lot of different authentication. You can also have bearer authentication. You can go and look it up in the specification. If you take uh, authentication there, you can see there is a lot of different things here. API keys, query strings. You also have bearer authentication, uh, OAuth. Um, so there, there's a lot of things you can read about here. Okay. If we go back to the definition, we can see, yeah, that that is basically the put. And uh, the same goes for delete. It just deletes a specific product. And we also have the security specification there. This will also require an ID and it will send us back a, a response that product has been deleted successfully as we have in the product JS. Okay, so this is why we can see that in the swagger. If we refresh, we have these uh, locks on the routes that require authentication. So if I go and create, uh, no, let's just delete a product that we had the ID for. Try it out. Let's input this ID here and run execute. It says access denied. I'm unauthorized. So if I, uh, let's see here, if I can register a user, because we also have the user and the login. And uh, the way that works is, let's 
let's just collapse this one here. So we have the user register. That is a post. And it will it is the same uh, structuring of this uh, definition that we have a summary uh, and a description and that uh, we have a request body it is required we will send a user this time so that is also something we defined in our schemas name email password and date so we're going to send a user and it's going to register this using the post uh, http method and then afterwards we will uh, we will get a response create it successfully get the uh, get the ID back of uh, the user and then afterwards we can also log in and the way we log in is that we will uh, provide two things we will provide an object JSON object with an email and a password and then we will get back uh, user logged in successfully we are going to get back uh, either um, an error or the token that we're going to pass around okay so let's have a look how this works because if we register a new user then if we do this you can see here whoop name test user one email and we can see one two three four five yeah i just want to demonstrate one thing here because we can see that if we run this uh, this uh, request we are actually rejected because uh, the length must be at least six characters long so our password is not long enough so that is one of the validations that we made in the joy uh, npm package the register validations are kicking in here and if we run it now uh, let's just see we don't actually yeah that's one thing we actually don't need to provide the date when we create a new user so we can just remove this for the request body so if we hit execute here we can see that we get 200 and then we get the ID of the user okay so let's try to log in with this user so we log in and we can see here if we specify the email So let's run this one here. So we get 200 and we get the JSON web token back here that we can pass along. And now we can use this to authenticate or authorize in Swagger. So we can click on this button over here. Available authorizations. We can have multiple auth authorizations if we want to. So it says API key, uh, auth token in header. We can provide our token here as we did with Postman. Click authorize. So now we should be authorized to use the protected routes. And if we try to delete this specific product that we had before, that requires uh, authorization. We can see if we go execute this one there says product was successfully deleted all right so it actually seems to work yeah, this documentation and it is built into this api now everything the scheme as the product the user all the different routes okay so that was a quick rundown of the swagger yaml and there's a lot of different things to this open api specification probably could be improved a lot but that is uh, the first hit here. But again, the Swagger YAML and everything is available in the GitHub uh, repository that is linked below. All right, uh, I hope you make this work and have fun with us, okay? Bye-bye.